Good evening everyone. I'm Gautam from Transwater Systems Private Limited. We are a company into water treatment systems uh, providing water treatment solutions for apartments, residential complexes, <coughs> commercial buildings and industries. Uh, we do water softness for residences, apartments. We do water treatment plants. Uh, we do commercial AVO systems and we do demineralize the plants by industries. Uh, we do tertiary water treatment plant wherein we convert the treated sewage coming from apartments, commercial buildings like malls, IT parks and convert into high quality portable water. So thanks for joining this meeting. Uh, this is, uh, there are a lot of questions, uh, myths and misconceptions around water softener and its maintenance. Uh, which one will be suited for my residents? A lot of questions people have. So we try to uh, cover all those questions in an unbiased way so that it can help you in making the right decision in picking the right water softener for your for your home or your, for your friends or family next slide uh, okay so before we get into uh, the understand the power functionality of our water softener we need to know what are our sources of water and where do I need the water softener and what are the contaminants uh, we need to look at it or what are the specific contaminants we need to look at it when you're picking the right softener so uh, basically we categorize water source into two things one is the surface water other one is the ground water surface water is the one which we get it from rivers and lakes which directly gets from the rain typically this water does not have a lot of mineral uh, dissolved mineral salts in it whereas uh, the other source is the ground water which we take it from ground using a open well or bore well and they tend to have high high amount of dissolved mineral salts in it so uh, generally what we encountered is uh, surface water has lesser uh, dissolved mineral salts that is we call it as a TDS a total dissolved solids whereas the groundwater tend to have higher TDS or total dissolved solids. So what is this term being used uh, generally see for example uh, whenever a RO person who comes home to service your domestic uh, RO system or a domestic water treatment system he uses a meter uh, a pen type of meter which he uses it in the water and tells you some parameters like this many TDS, this many ppm of TDS in your water. So let's understand what it is. <coughs> so as I said before, TDS stands for total dissolved solids, which means uh, water can have different types of contaminants. So for uh, this, uh, there is something called dissolved mineral salts. This is, comes under the category of chemical contaminations. So uh, a water can have a lot of dissolved mineral salts. For example, it can have calcium, magnesium, iron, fluorides, nitrates, arsenic, heavy metal uh, and heavy metals of course it's not part of dissolved solids but uh, solids it's an ions. So there are a lot of uh, <coughs> dissolved mineral salts in the water of which certain salts are good for human consumption, certain salts are bad for consumption and certain salts are bad for external appliances. Say for example uh, calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate. So these are the salts which is a uh, portion of them are partly it's good for human consumption but it is very bad for uh, external applications like your bath, bathing, washing cloths uh, and it is very bad for your tiles, uh, washing machines, geysers, etc. So uh, so what we generally do is we, we measure the uh, total salts present in the water is and we call this is and that as we call it as total dissolved solids. So of this not also as I said not all are harmful for external appliances calcium and magnesium carbonate this is these two salts are predominantly causing this scaling on your bathrooms. So we call these as hardness creating salts and uh, the other thing which commonly we use is the PPM. PPM stands for parts per million or in other terms it can be called also it can be also called as milligrams per liter of water so as i said uh, like when the person who comes home to uh, service your domestic RO system he measure the tds and say for example 500 ppm 700 ppm so 700 is a total dissolved solid content and ppm stands for the uh, is a unit to measure the tds so it can be uh, so let's say uh, this is the units we used to uh, measure the uh, dissolved tds so same thing, um, hardness is a subset of TDS of all the salts, calcium and magnesium carbonate which contributes to hardness that is also measured in the uh, unit called PPM. So for example, if somebody says the TDS is 700 PPM, my hardness will be around 300, 400 PPM. This, uh, the rest uh, remaining salts could be some other salts. 
so that's the difference between tds and hardness and ppm so of, as i said like this hardness whenever whichever water which has this higher higher amount of hardness creating salt that is calcium and magnesium carbonate then we call that water as hard water so typically bowl water tend to be more hard hard in nature so we call that the as a hard water when it comes to cities like like bangalore we see uh, predominantly in the areas around sajapur road electronic city whitefield uh, hennoor hebal these areas where the bowl water tend to have higher amount of uh, uh, hardness so we call, uh, this pockets will have uh, high hard water so now let's see what are the effects of hard water so hard water <coughs> tend to form a lot of lime scale deposits in your taps bathrooms uh, your geysers washing machines uh, solar water heaters so what happens is when the water gets heated up this salts go and deposit on top of the surfaces for example in your geyser it deposits on top of the heating coil thereby reducing your efficiency of a water heater for a period of time this coil tend to brittle so uh, and in terms of your bathroom taps you can see this white lime scale deposits on your tap which will it just later become very difficult to remove them similarly with the pro same problem with your uh, bathroom tiles so the other problem is fading of clothes so what happens this lime scale creating salt the calcium magnesium carbonate go and stick on top on top of the surface of the fabrics thereby reducing the brightness as well as uh, over a period of time the the life of the cloth has will come down white spot strand signs so this is a very common thing which you can observe in your bar kitchen so whenever you use this hard water to wash your utensils once the water gets evaporates this uh, calcium ion calcium salt gets stick to the surface of the uh, vessels thereby it forms a white spot on top of the vessels the other two problems are uh, associated with the human beings like uh, human beings uh, the, the common problem is the dry skin which is whenever you take bath in uh, hard water once the water gets evaporates uh, the salt still will be sticking to your surfaces thereby creating a rough uh, skin on a rough skin rough patches on your skin uh, other one is hair loss hair loss could be a uh, due to be plenty of reasons associated with hair loss if uh, there are uh, one uh, one common uh, problem uh, because of this hard water hard water can increase your hair losses but if at all uh, that it can be observed when you use a soft water and hard water then we can easily make out so uh, now we came across the problems uh, what is the hard water associated problems how we are going to solve this problem so when it comes to reduce the hardness in the water there are two technologies being widely used across the world one is a water softener other one is a water conditioner so people uh, always tend to confuse with these two terms whether to should i go for a softener and a conditioner let's understand what is a softener and what is a conditioner then we will make out which will be the right solution for every household so what is a water softener so water softener is a uh, is a technology uh, it works on a principle called ion exchange wherein we use certain chemicals uh, to reduce or replaces the hardness creating salt in the water say for example a water softener will be a vessel which will be having something called a softener resin which holds the uh, sodium ions on top of it so that the whenever the water which comes into uh, the softener this sodium ion uh, sodium chloride views uh, sodium ions inside sodium chloride reacts with calcium carbonate thereby converting the calcium carbonate into sodium carbonate in the output water so effectively if you see uh, the output water will be having sodium carbonate instead of calcium carbonate thereby reducing the uh, reduces the calcium ions in the output water this is how a water softener works so as i said uh, uh, water softener removes or reduces the hardness in the water so effectively you can measure the output water quality so uh, when you when you are using a softener we have to measure the um, output hardness in the water so as as we saw before like there is a two parameters tds and hardness tds is measured using something called a pentec meter which is working on a principle uh, working on the principle of electrical conductivity so just like dip the meter into it we will tend to see how much is your uh, to total dissolved solids in the water in case of a water softener we don't uh, uh, remove or uh, we, we remove the calcium ions in the water but it will be replaced with the sodium ions so effectively if you see the output water your tds will remain some or slightly higher whereas you have to use something called a hardness testing kits this hardness testing kits will measure the uh, amount of calcium ions present in the water by using a hardness testing kit you can easily make out whether my hardness has come down or not so for example you take the input water before softening you measure the hardness 
using a hardness testing kit and measure the uh, output hard uh, output water from the softener and again use the same hardness testing kit measure the hardness thereby you can make out how much efficient my water softener is so that we can easily make out whether my water has been softened or not so due, uh, because of this we can easily assess the performance of the system so uh, so because uh, when you use a water softener all the associated problem with the water softener is being addressed so for example uh, it can reduce a lime scale deposit on your bathroom tap styles it can reduce the white spots and stains it really increases it increases your lifetime of your fabrics etc all the problems associated with the water softener has been addressed so these are the advantages of having a water softener so before we look at the um, uh, disadvantages of a softener we will go and see the what is the um, what is a water conditioner and its advantage then we'll see the uh, drawbacks of both the softener and conditioner what is a water conditioner so water conditioner does not reduces the hardness instead it reduces the effect caused by the hardness how so uh, there are plenty of uh, water plenty of water conditioners available in the market and again it works on its own principle so for example we have polyphosphate based conditioners we have electromagnetic water conditioners um, then couple other water conditioners are there so uh, typically when you see this calcium carbonate present in the water this can exist in either of two molecular structures one is this calcite form the other one is an aragonite aragonite form calcite form is nothing but it is an un unstable but uh, sorry uneven structure but it is a more stable form this is a form at uh, most um, calcium ions calcium carbonate present in the water so uh, since it is an uh, stable and uneven form it can easily stick to the surfaces so what this water conditioner does is it converts this calcite form that is the, the molecular structure of this calcium carbonate which convert uh, it exists in the calcite form which is more stable form and convert into a aragonite form so when you're doing when we're doing that's in aragonite form the surface uh, the molecular structure will be more even so they don't stick to the surfaces so that's how this works so uh, if you see the if you measure the output water you see you, may, you tend to see the same amount of calcium ions present in the input water as well as the output water so uh, since we don't use any kind of uh, chemicals to uh, reduce the hardness so the output remains uh, the output calcium ions present in the water remains same so uh, there is your output water will remain as it is only thing is the effect of hardness uh, scaling which happens on your surfaces will be reduced so because of that uh, since there is no uh, no well, there is no uh, we need to you know to add salts or anything to do the maintenance so then the periodic maintenance will be minimum there is no recurring maintenance cost and there is no waste water okay so this is how water conditioner work now let's go back and see the uh, disadvantages of having a water softener and water conditioner so uh, as we saw before the water softener requires uh, sodium ions to be present in the water softener to do this uh, ion exchange to happen so what happens is when you charge this softener with uh, sodium chloride for a period of time the sodium ions present in the softener will vanishes so it requires to be periodically uh, recharged with sodium ions so that process we called regeneration so before we do, uh, so we need to uh, dilute salt in the water we recharge the softener with this sodium ions and then uh, you need to let the water in to soften it and over a period of time the calcium which gets accumulated has to be wiped out so that process we call it as a backwash so there is a maintenance which needs to be followed to get the efficient uh, to get the expected result from the water softener so so water softener requires maintenance periodically if and it, there is a recurring maintenance cost so we need to keep on adding salt once the um, salt has been uh, sodium ions in the system has been vanished so do you, as i said like we then each system has to be backwashed to remove the calcium ions which got accumulated in the system so there will be a wastewater which comes out of the system that during the backwash process so that is also a must so the this is the disadvantage of having a water softener but when it comes to water conditioner as we saw before there is no periodic maintenance because we are not going to remove the calcium ions from the water there is no recurring maintenance cost we are not going to add any salt to the system there will not be any wastewater because we are not doing a uh, we don't do a backwash for longer duration here but there is a drawback as well so uh, when it comes to water conditioner the output water hardness will not be reduced so we don't remove the reduce remove or reduce the calcium ions from the water so hardness will remain the same so output water quality cannot be measured so there is no scientific or technical way of measuring the uh, performance or quality of the output water so as long as we don't see there is any scaling or lime scaling uh, deposit on your surfaces 
we have to believe that the system is working. So performance of the water conditioner cannot be ascertained. ascertained. Uh, although we we don't since we don't remove the calcium ions, leathering or uh, leathering will not improve and we use a water conditioner. So you you may still need to use a uh, huge quantity of detergents to improve the leathering and limitation in storing the water for longer duration. So as we saw before that the water conditioner convert this molecular structure of calcium carbonate from calcite form to aragonite form. So uh, calcite form is the most stable form whereas the aragonite form is a bit unstable. So uh, for example, when you condition the water, the molecular structure would get changed to aragonite form, will remain in this form for eight to, 10, uh, eight to 24 hours, not more than that. So if you, if you tend to store this water beyond this certain point of time, say to 24 hours, the, again, the aragonite form will get converted into calcite form. So then your water become a very normal, uh, same, same as your input water. So it can tend to easily tend to form the scaling. So there is a limitation of storing this water for a longer duration. Next, uh, do I need a water softener? So we don't recommend water softener for anybody. Uh, sorry, not everybody. Uh, because, uh, because again, depends upon your water quality. So water softener, uh, we need to decide based on three parameters. One is uh, your uh, quality uh, what is your source of water or what is your quality of input water second is uh, whether uh, and how many how many people are there how much volume of water being consumed and we need to see what is the feasibility again your plumbing has to be studied whether it is feasible or not so uh, let's see in detail so uh, do I need a uh, for example if my house is using uh, bovel water definitely uh, most of the bovel now um, bovel tend to have high TDS and higher hardness so the, um, wherever we use a bovel water, uh, what we do we ask them to do is we do a, a water sample to be tested from a laboratory laboratory to get to know what are the other contaminants in the water. So that can, uh, for example, uh, water can have iron in it. If there is iron in the water, then that needs to be treated before we send it to the softener so that you get to uh, get a longer life. Because if the iron in the water, it can reduce your life of your uh, soft, softener. Uh, and other contaminants we need to understand that can help. Uh, or at least we ask them to do a bare minimum TDS and hardness, which we generally do it whenever we go for a site inspection. And we will suggest uh, the uh, softener because the softener, um, the hardness is going to decide, the, decide the, what kind of resins to be used inside the softener. So uh, some places they use tanker water. Most of the places the tanker water will be the source to be a bovel. So definitely they also need a softener. Whereas some places where they use uh, surface water, like a cavity water, then in such cases, we may not need to have a softener. Generally, we tend to have uh, hardness in the ranges of two, uh, uh, TDS is in the ranges of 250 to 300. So in such cases, hard uh, softener may not be required. But at some places we encounter like people have, uh, don't have sufficient su uh, supply of um, bovel, uh, BWSSB water, that is a cavity water, where they use uh, mix with the bovel water. In such cases, the hardness and TDS of your bowel are extremely high, then that can lead to hardness uh, and can lead to lime scale deposits in your bathroom. In such cases, we may need to go for a water softener. Water quality to be tested. Yes, uh, we cannot uh, say anywhere that blindly I can say that for this house I need a softener, this house they may not need a softener. We don't say that one. Uh, for example, uh, within the city limits where the bore well is uh, say 200 to 300 feet in, and then your input water TDS is less than 300, 400 ppm, then you, it, you are, if your hardness is less than 100 ppm, then you may not need to have a water softener. So until unless we test the water, we cannot say that whether we need a softener or not. The thing is, the other thing is a feasibility study. See, for example, water softener requires water to be sent with pressure. So uh, we, it requires an extra pump. So most of the houses, what we uh, where we see, what we see is people take the bowl water and fill it to the sump. From there, they'll send it to the water tank. In case of residential complexes, uh, independent homes. So in in such places, we will reuse the existing pump which they used to pump the water from sump to the water tank, and we will fit in a softener in between, and then we will fill the water tank with the soft water. Uh, in some places, where they what they do is they'll pump the bowl water directly to the water tank. In such cases, we may need to have an extra pump, a uh, small pump we needed, and of course another tank. From there, we need to take the uh, output to the house. So these are the three parameters which we generally uh, look at it uh, while doing this, uh, while when we go for an installation of a water softener. There are a lot of uh, myths and misconceptions with respect to water softener. Um, we will try to answer, address them so that we'll have everybody should have a clarity and what uh, in understanding the softener. 
so all water contaminants will be removed so um, this is a common question which people uh, i meet whenever i meet people people which they ask all water contaminants will all the water contaminants be removed no not definitely not so water softener is designed to remove only the harness creating it's called calcium and magnesium carbonate from the water it is not going to remove other contaminants like your nitrates iron fluoride uh, uh, there are so, so many other contaminants in the water so for example turbidity uh, smell color nothing it will not remove it will only addresses the harness creating uh, component in the water so uh, when it comes to drinking water that's why if you have a softener we still recommend you to have a um, we still recommend to have an ro system because the other contaminants will not be addressed by a water softener my output water tds will be reduced no the tds of the output water will remain same or in some place some cases it can it can go it can increases further slightly because the conductivity of sodium salts uh, sodium ions are slightly higher than the calcium ions so it can increases slightly but what you have to measure is the hardness definitely the hardness in the output water will calm down so what we need to use a hardness testing kit to measure the output water hardness no maintenance needed <coughs> so uh, this is other problem where we come across to uh, across uh, customers where they have already have a water softener but they say that the softener is not working so water softener requires maintenance so what we need to have is you need to uh, have a um, you need to maintain a system periodically say once in a week once in 15 days it is decided by your hardness input water hardness volume water of water being used in a day and your capacity of the system so you need to have we need to do a certain kind of maintenance so uh, once in a week or once in 15 days you need to do the backwash and then add a sufficient quantity of salt and regenerate the system so um, some in places uh, where places where we don't have manpower or we don't have time to maintain the system we recommend to go for an automatic multi port works that can help in reducing the um, maintenance for example um, you can uh, what is it you you just like you need to have a smaller bigger drum where you need to put the sufficient quantity of salt record for a month or two and you we have an option to pre configure the automated wall say for example uh, after this much quantity of wall of this much volume of water do the regeneration and do the backwash so that you need not to go and uh, do this kind of maintenance which is required in case of a manual system so that can help you in reducing the maintenance having said that it is still required to add required quantity of salt once in a month or two can i install the water softener without testing the water quality uh, strictly no uh, we don't recommend water softener for anybody or everybody so until unless we know the water quality to do the basic water quality testing and then we recommend a bare minimum we measure the tds and hardness and we recommend the right softener uh, 10 kg 20 kg 30 kg 5 kg of salt is required per month so this is commonly uh, common misconception that people uh, for easy understanding people uh, p uh, what people recommend is yeah, put 5 kg 10 kg of salt and for a month and your softener will work no not true so uh, there is no fixed amount of salt uh, which is recommended for every household because this uh, this is decided by uh, your volume of resin used in zero softener your input water hardness and the volume of water being used so for example if i install a softener for a family of four in one region and if i put the same softener for a family of four in another region your salt required or the volume uh, your time frequency of regeneration between every um, frequency of maintenance between every regeneration is completely different because your input water hardness is going to be varying so we have a formula to calculate so we will calculate according to your input water hardness your volume of water and we will tell you how much quantity of salt is required between every regeneration so there is no fixed quantity of salt but we will um, we will tell you how much is based on the hardness volume of resin and volume of water being used I scale needed to maintain so uh, there is uh, there is another misconception people think that I need to have a dedicated person to maintain it or I need to take an AMC or um, um, it's like a, so that these are the reasons people think that then they'll discard it so uh, when you compare the cost of your, um, your regular um, maintenance of your other things say for example your taps can go bad your geysers all these things it's recommended to have a softener when you're using a bowel water so it can reduces or increase uh, reduces your um, what is it? it increases your efficiency of the appliances and also there is no high skill is needed it's just like a um, matter of uh, five ten minutes uh, you need to you can do the finish of the job just like changing the wall position and turning and on of the pump only thing is it requires the dedication uh, dedication, dedication we need to dedicate some time to do the maintenance task 
that's all it need that's all it requires so um, th that's all i have uh, we will take you to take some of the questions which came in the chat box um, so this is a question from mr vikas tridharan uh, he has a question uh, he, he lives in an apartment and they have a huge water treatment plant so his question is what are the operation cost apart from power manpower in in case of a water softener so uh, uh, interesting to know like uh, so when it comes to maintaining a water softener um, there are a uh, couple of costs like uh, we need to make sure that i mean there's a power cost of course there's a pump involved in pumping the water through softener and there is a, a salt cost that is a softener requires salts to be added there is a salt cost and of course manpower other than that there's a water cost because um, most of the apartments now buy water from private tankers so portion of the water which get wasted during this back wash and regeneration typically this is one or two times your vessel capacity that much quantity of water is getting wasted these are the costs generally it happens and other than that uh, there is some um, there is some uh, once in three, three to four years you may need to replace the resin that is uh, that is the other cost which you know <coughs> Again, another question. Uh, my apartment uses 30% of the water from BWSSP, 30% of the water coming from Bowell, and remaining 40% comes through tanker. How do I manage in maintaining or uh, what is it like? What which water to be tested or how much salt? Uh, how do we calculate the uh, maintenance? So it's a it's a very common problem everybody everybody faces. Some apartment does not have access to uh, BWSSP, but they are managing with Bowell and tanker. In either case, they have hardness in it. But it, when it comes to um, your uh, your case, like your 30% of your, your water is from BWSSP, 30% from Bowel and 40% from tanker. So um, your uh, what we need to know is uh, we need to know your hardness of your Bowel and uh, tanker, which will help us in identify uh, what is your uh, approximate TDS and hardness. And and BWSSB water typically this varies. It's not it will not going to increase. It will going to come down when it comes to summer. So we need to decide by testing these two water um, TDS and hardness and other parameter, and we can uh, we can calculate what is the required quantity of uh, what is the right system required for your apartment. Also, the other thing which may um, happen is, say for example during summer your BWSSB and your boil yield may come down. So your tanker uh, um, your tanker input may increases. Will that impact your um, uh, hardness? Uh, maybe slightly, but we'll come to know because uh, when it comes to water tanker distribution, uh, generally these tankers uh, distribute water from the nearby source. Uh, for them, the cost to uh, work out is the maximum radius it can go up to is the three kilometers. So within that point, there will not be a big variation in terms of the quality of groundwater. So we'll, on an average, we'll be getting the more or less plus or minus five ten percentage or there will be a variation in the water quality which you're going to get so with the basic testing of your tanker water and borehole water we can easily tell what could be the right water softness required for you okay there is another question uh he there's a mr ganesh he asked a question in my apartment uh, we use borewell and bwssp water and the portion which we at which we use this varies so how do i manage so uh, it's a very interesting question so uh, because uh, he, he has other thing we asked is like uh, he he sends his person to maintain the water softener during the, during the backwash and regeneration uh, every alternate day so is that a right thing to do so uh, generally uh, water softener maintenance has to be done when uh, we gen uh, what we do is in case of a manual system we will tell say for um, they know we know that this much quantity of uh, water will be used in a day or two so you need to do you need to do the back caution regeneration and if your input water quality varies then we will not know so in such cases what we recommend is you can have what you can have is you can have a uh, output uh, flow meter installed on the output side so you can maintain a logbook wherein you ask a person to do the value when he does the uh, back wash and regeneration and once it hits that level say for example every thousand it is he need to do we need to do a back wash and regeneration once it hits a thousand it is then he need to do rather than doing uh, every alternate day or once in three days uh, that that would be a right way of doing it because uh, in case of an independent homes it's very difficult to do that but it comes to an apartment where we have a dedicated manpower to maintain the system that is the right thing to do you need to do uh, put the flow meter and measure the hardness so other thing is uh, even the better way of doing it is you can have a hardness testing kit at the site so what you can do is 
you measure the hardness when you do the backwash and regeneration means posterior backwash and regeneration you note down the flow volume be, volume of water being treated so far and measure the output hardness maybe come after a day or two and next two, after two days you can come and measure the output hardness first and measure the volume and if the hardness is anywhere below 100 ppm then he can wait for one more day or uh, uh, maybe another uh, one more day and then he can do the hardness once it goes beyond the threshold so that way we have to uh, do the maintenance so that you can have uh, you, you can efficiently utilize your system rather than blindly doing uh, based on the day so that's the way we, we recommend to do the uh, so uh, maintenance of the water software i hope that uh, uh, that answers your question uh, i think we don't have any more question okay uh, th thank you thanks you all for joining this uh, session i hope uh, we have added value to you uh, for your time so the key takeaway what uh, what we what uh, we what you can expect from this expected from the session is like uh, what are how a softener works uh, more than that what are the myths and misconceptions people have towards what a softener so that um, you can take a well informed decision when you want to pick a water softener for yourself for your family or friends thank you thank you all for joining the session have a wonderful day thank you